8-bit versus 10-bit. You might have heard these terms before, but what exactly do they mean? When should you use one over the other? For starters, 8-bit isn't this. Eight bit video is everywhere, regardless of how it was originally shot. DVDs, Blu rays, TV, and almost anything you see online is generally in 8 bit. So, if 8 bits are enough for a Hollywood blockbuster that you would watch from the comfort of your own home, then why would you ever need to shoot in 10 bit? Well, what we're really talking about is something known as bit depth or color depth. Bit depth can be thought of as how many possible gradations of color there are in an image. It is not the same as color gamut, which is the range of possible color. You can have 256 shades of red, blue, or green in an 8-bit image, but with 10-bit video, you can have 1,024 shades. Now, do we really need that many shades? Well, that depends on who you ask. 10-bit video has existed for many years in the professional broadcast and film world, but only now are we really seeing it come into the mainstream. You can thank three different trends for making this possible. Cameras with log modes, easily accessible color grading software, and more recently, delivering an HDR with wider color gamuts. Ask anyone who's tried to grade a log image and they'll probably tell you that you can only do so much with 8-bit video. With only 256 shades per color, some scenes can exhibit what's called banding in what should be a smooth gradient. In most instances, banding doesn't appear until you color grade, meaning you can only push the image to a certain degree. You don't have a lot of wiggle room in 8-bit, meaning you have to get your exposure correct in camera. Now, while you can use a log mode with an 8-bit camera, it's not always a great idea. And there are some log modes that handle it better than others. Canon's original C-Log, for example, was designed for 8-bit video, and it does hold up pretty well. You see, standard Direct 709 footage can present roughly five to six stops of dynamic range, so when you're using a non-log or normal mode, those eight bits only have to be spread across a picture that doesn't utilize the sensor's entire range. Log modes exist in order to get every stop out of the sensor into a limited space. So when you record this way, you're using those same eight bits across far more information, which then needs to be stretched out later. You can actually visualize this if you look at a waveform monitor. As you add curves or adjust levels, you're stretching the data of the video out, revealing gaps in the image. Banding is exactly what happens when these gaps become too prominent. But shooting in 10 bits solves this. Now, all that information from the sensor can be defined in 1,024 steps, allowing for more drastic color grades and smooth gradients in places like skies. Let's say that Rec. 709 has regular old blue, while P3 or Rec. 2020 have brilliant blue. I just made those up. 8-bit color can still display brilliant blue, but it's going to have fewer shades between that and regular old blue. The larger your gamut, the more challenging it is for an 8-bit mode to accurately represent it. This is why HDR requires a minimum of 10 bits. <sighs> but that still doesn't answer how nearly every form of video gets away with it. I know this is going to sound weird, but believe it or not, for most types of video, 8-bit works just fine. Provided you have the bit rate, all it takes is a little bit of noise. Don't believe me? Watch what happens when I add just a small bit of noise to this image. The banding is a lot less noticeable. And just like we could see the gaps in the waveform, you can see the noise filling in those gaps. When professional content is finished in 10 bits or more, the version you end up seeing comes from that source. It's a lot like how a 4K image looks really sharp and clean when downscaled to 1080p. The process in this case is called dithering, and it blends colors together using noise. On top of this, most movies, even those shot digitally, have a form of sensor noise or film grain that hides the limits of 8-bit recording. Lastly, just because you shoot 10-bit doesn't mean you need a 10-bit monitor to appreciate the gains. Yes, it's true that the most accurate representation and benefits of 10-bit can only be seen on a 10-bit display. However, shooting and especially grading in a higher bit depth still gives you added flexibility that you see in the final image. Those cleaner gradients, for example, are still visible in the 8-bit monitor that you or anyone else has. In fact, it's the monitor or graphics card you have that is dithering the image before you even see it. So if you aren't doing heavy grading, or better yet, if you're not using a log mode at all, shooting in 8-bits isn't all that bad. That said, 
If you shoot in log modes and want to perform extensive, creative color grades, you will definitely want to shoot in 10-bit. And if you want to produce HDR content, you're actually required to shoot in at least 10 bits. As always, consider the needs of your production. From B&H, this is Doug. I'll see you next time.